My bad. My bad. I apologize. Absolutely not. That is so ugly and weird. (laughs) I made a big mistake. I'm Nora, and this is also known as Nora News. Hello there, I'm Nora, and you're watching, also known as Nora Knits. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me for another podcast episode today. I have some things to chat about. I have a new cast on. I have some new epiphanies when it comes to whips. So I'm really excited to sit down and sort out all of my feelings today. Day. I'm also in particularly good spirits because it's my birthday week. So if you are watching this the weekend of March 23rd, my birthday was the 22nd. And so I'm probably out and about uh, celebrating this weekend. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some knitting. <sighs> Grab yourself a project and let's do this thing. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive on in, you guys. When it comes to discussing whips, my favorite way to do that is by starting with the projects that have been on the needles the longest. So today we will be starting with my Folklore Cardigan by Lion Brand. I'm starting to feel a little bit like a broken record when it comes to this project as we've now been talking about this for 36 days it's been on the needles. So we're a little tangled up here. Let me see if I could sort myself out. These are the sleeves of the Folklore Cardigan that I am knitting two at a time. And we're almost there. My goal really was to try and get these done (laughs) by today, but I just didn't get around to too much knitting over the weekend, and so that did not happen. However, my goal is to get them done for Easter, which is now 11 days away, so to get the full project done by Easter. These sleeves are the last component to the fully pieced cardigan that I have been knitting up for my little cousin, and once these are done, which at this point, All I have left to do is knit a little bit further for the length. I believe that the pattern said to knit until the full sleeve is about 18 inches. I'll have to double check that and then start the shaping for the shoulder. And I'm probably going to knit them just a little bit shorter. And so I don't have too much further to go, in fact. At the moment, these are measuring in at 13 inches from top to bottom, and it says to knit until 18 inches, but that's considering the fact that it should already have the ribbing on the bottom, which I don't yet because I cast on all of my pieces for this cardigan with a provisional crochet cast on so that once everything is knit up, I can go ahead and block everything and then pick my stitches back up so that I can knit the cuffs and the hem and the button bands all with a beautiful Italian bind off. So it's a good thing that I sat down to talk about this right now because I forgot that when I'm measuring, I need to keep in mind that I will have at least a one and a half inch ribbing at the cuff, maybe two inches, but let's say one and a half. So realistically, I don't want to knit this much past 16 and a half inches. However, I'm knitting this for my little cousin who is a bit more petite and so So I have the measurements of her favorite sweater that I'll be referencing. I'm pretty sure I'm only going to be knitting this a a couple more inches, maybe more like 14 and a half to accommodate her sizing. I'll double check the numbers. However, I did want to talk about, so with the rest of the pieces of this cardigan, so so far I've knit the two fronts and the back panel, those I've seen together at the shoulder, and In each of those segments, the front and back, I reduced the amount of stitches that I had, as well as I'm knitting this at a 
I never remember if it's a smaller gauge or a bigger gauge, but a gauge in that I'm knitting the whole garment a bit smaller. I'm still knitting this in the size small that comes in the pattern with those modifications. And all the while I'm referencing her favorite sweater so that we can get as close to that as possible without totally breaking my brain <laughs> to figure out all of these cables. But I reduced each of those sections, the front and the back, by I believe eight stitches each in total. So then I wasn't sure when it came to shaping the armhole, as you are knitting this bottom up, you're increasing as you go along. And I wasn't sure if I should be increasing the total way or if I should cut those increases short. However, as I was getting closer to the end of the increases suggested in the pattern, I was just really holding it up to the finished front and back and checking to make sure that the width of this sleeve at its, wide, at its widest point would bridge the gap between the front and back. If I flat lay everything, I can see that this is indeed that the full amount of increases is what's needed for me to match the dimensions of the armhole I've already created. So I actually last week was saying that I was just waiting to block the front and back panels to seam up the side seams as I haven't done that yet. But I realized after that that actually the smartest thing to do is I have seamed at the shoulder. Once these sleeves are done, everything's going to get blocked, and then I'll be sewing in the sleeves to the whole shoulder and that gap in between where the front and back are, and then closing up the whole side seam. So good thing I didn't do that yet anyway, but I wound up doing the full amount of increases. That was the only question I had going into these sleeves, and so now it's just a matter of, like I said, how much further do I want to knit this so that the sleeve is long enough for her. I mean, holding this up to myself right now, and the sweater does fit more like a um, set-in sleeve, so I don't need to consider how it would fit in like a drop shoulder. Holding this up to myself, this sleeve is coming just past my elbow, maybe just to my elbow. And my cousin is literally like half my size. But I do have, like I said, her sweater dimensions. So considering the fact that I still have, I think it's 11 rows of shaping, I'm going to measure how tall that's going to make this whole thing. And the worst case scenario is if things are a little bit off once I go and seam everything together, I can just make up for that in how much ribbing I do or don't do. So I was hoping to have these done today. I don't, um, but I am very close and will hopefully get these done tonight if not tomorrow night and then get them blocking so that when I podcast next week, I'll just be moving on to ribbing, at which point, you know, we, we're all getting to a week away from Easter. So I think if I could get these blocked, all of the body pieces, a full soak, let those cables expand and live their best life, then if I'm cutting it close in the end, I can always just steam block the ribbing. So I'm not so concerned about that. So I think we're right on time or we're going to be cutting it very close. The good news is too, I am knitting this for my cousin. However, this is a funny little vicariously gifted through her grandmother, my aunt. And so my aunt bought the kit for this, asked me if I would knit it up for her. However, she is a fiber enthusiast herself. And so if there's anything I don't wrap up, then Aunt Virginia, that one's on you. <laughs> but my goal is to get it all done. Um, and I even think I'm going to just pick up some buttons and get those in too. So I always like to have my buttons before I do the button band so that I can reference the exact buttons I want rather than retroactively trying to fit a, a button through a buttonhole, you know, finding the right button after the fact. I want to make sure that the size of the button looks proportionate on the button band on the garment altogether. So if I need to increase or decrease the size of the buttonhole to accommodate said button, I have no problem doing that. So that's how I'm going to play things. And, um, and yeah, we'll see. So this is where we're at, and I'm not even going to bother with a progress keeper. Apparently, I never even moved the one from last week and put it back on. <laughs> so we're almost done with the sleeves. 
If you've been here before, you may have heard me mention that in order to knit the folklore cardigan, I created some spreadsheets to better lay out the cable pattern for myself personally. I found the pattern to just be a little bit tricky in that there were individual charts for each cable, but then you sort of had to go and find the right one. And it was very scattered. It's a free pattern. And then I had also seen some people move those charts into a full big chart. And when I started knitting this, I just was not in the mood to work from a chart. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. And I was happier to just read out each cable. So I went and I made a spreadsheet of those cables and I got around to emailing everyone their copies of those spreadsheets. However, I have also made a link to a Dropbox where I have both the PDFs of the spreadsheets that if you want to knit this cardigan and you're looking for just an assistant in doing that, you can print out those PDFs, you can download them to your device, your iPad, whatever it is, and work from those two if that's going to help you. And if you are someone who's comfortable with making spreadsheets, then you can also download from the same link the Excel file. I mean, I did it in Google Sheets, so I'm not 100% how that plays out. But if, if you know how to edit a spreadsheet, then I'm sure you could figure that out. So if you wanted to edit them yourself or change the colors or do whatever you wanted to do with them, you're free to do that as well. So I, I'm going to link that now in the description. And it's also in my Instagram bio in the link, link tree. <laughs> That's right there. You'll see it says folklore spreadsheets. And so now that's accessible to anyone who wants it. Um, I just ask that you take it as the free resource that it is. And please don't hold me accountable for your folklore cardigan. I just figured if I took the time to make those spreadsheets and they helped me so much, then why not share them with you? So they're there as you need them. And I hope that they're very helpful. I found them to be super helpful. They're color coded, all that. Anyway, those are there for you now. Okay, so now let's move into the hottest topic of <laughs> my recent whips, which has been in a complete standstill since we spoke last. And that is my Sand Cardigan by Maria Isaeva. And I am knitting this in Noro Madara and the Colorway Sake. It's my dream yarn. It's my dream cardigan. So I am taking this one day at a time. It has now been on the needles for 30 days. And I don't think the work I've done is very representative of that. But I think that's a good thing because it means I've been very careful about making the smartest choices that I can with this one. So let's take a peek at what we've got going on here. So if you saw last week's podcast, then this is going to look familiar to you. However, it might just look a little bit different because I did block it. And boy, am I glad that I did. So I have a few things to talk about. For a quick refresher, I'm knitting this cardigan in the size five at a slightly smaller gauge to get the best size for me as well as the best fabric for me. I'm knitting this on a 4.5 millimeter needle when the pattern calls for a five millimeter needle. However, that's with a different yarn, all of that, but just for reference. And the construction of this is that you cast on with this back edge, and that's what comes all the way down the shoulders. And then you go in, pick up the fronts, and you knit down to a specific measurement that's in the pattern, of course, and then you go right into picking up the sleeves. And I got to, and then you go back to the body and start just knitting flat back and forth for the massive length of this cardigan. So I got about two inches past the sleeves when I tried it on and realized I felt like the sleeves were really too big for the proportions I was going for. And what I don't think I made clear in the past, and I think I've struggled to articulate my exact feelings, is that I want this to be oversized. I want it to be a relaxed fit in general, but I want everything to look proportionate. And I 
also want to bear in mind that this yarn is prone to growing. It's going to be a floor-length cardigan, and so I also imagine over time, the sheer weight of it is going to weigh it down that much more. So if I'm feeling nervous about something being too big right now, now's a good time to address it. So I did the thing that no one wants to do, and I stopped completely, and I started, I went and blocked it. Thank goodness I did, because I measured before and after, and let me tell you my findings. I will try to include a graphic here so that you can see the exact points that I'm referencing, but since the numbers are really going to be mostly specific to me and not you, I'm just going to tell you the difference from pre to post blocking measurements. So from the neck to the hem edge, this actually shrunk about a quarter inch in blocking. Interesting. <laughs> in the sleeve width, so from the top to bottom of the sleeve when it's laying flat, it grew an inch. In the sleeve length, so the shoulder seam down to where I stopped knitting the sleeve, there was zero difference before and after blocking. And in the overall width of the body, so from shoulder seam to shoulder seam is what I measured, it grew two and a quarter inches. Now, what I find really interesting about those numbers is that anywhere the fabric was going vertically, so from the, the neck edge to the hem of this, the growth was minimal, non-existent, or it shrunk. And anywhere the fabric was moving horizontally, so in more of an accordion fashion, and in the sleeve from top to bottom, it grew pretty drastically. So already, I felt validated in my concerns of the sleeves just growing that much more post-blocking. So I went ahead and I tried it on again after blocking. And let me do that for you now. Okay. So post-blocking, and this sleeve is not going to help in any way, the sleeves just want to sort of stand off of the body. My original concerns about potentially having knit this at too big a size overall are completely squashed because I think that the body of this is exactly what I want it to be. Bear in mind that there's going to be a double knit button band here, so that's going to kind of help it sit on the shoulders, I hope. But the sleeve, I mean, there's just, there's like miles of additional fabric in here. You could see it bubbling and puckering. And when I'm not wearing a balloon sleeve top, it's really, if I look how much, oh, hello. <laughs> look how much space there is. I could fit two or three of my arms in here. I understand that the garment is designed to have oversized, relaxed fitting sleeves, and I want that but I don't want this. Especially considering the fact that once this is longer and heavier and I wear it more often, this edge is just going to weigh and weigh and weigh and stretch out. Oh, OC needs water. So there's all of these variables that are coming into play and there's a lot of sort of making educated guesses. And then there's some just evaluating the facts, which is what I was trying to do by making those pre and post blocking measurements. And so that's one thing that I'm taking into consideration. The next thing is I was watching Laura Penrose and her knitting podcast yesterday. And she was showing a design of hers and the tweaks she wanted to make to it. And one of those things that she was showing was how when she held up the garment, the sleeve was sort of coming out of the armhole and then bowing and then going back with decreases. And so her takeaway from that was that she had picked up too many stitches around the armhole. And I went sprinting to go find this. 
<laughs> because I was like, wait a second, I swear that's what's happening with mine. So I'm going to take it off again. When I hold this up, can you see how it almost like, <laughs> even though I have done decreases from the pickup to the place I left off, the sleeve is almost growing as it leaves the armhole. And that made me double check the, the pickup rate. And then I learned that I made a big mistake. <laughs> Miss Humble came knocking on my door and said, girl, those sleeves are too big and it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> My finding was that I picked up a total of six stitches more than what the pattern called for in my size. And I'm glad I wrote down, I wrote down how many stitches I picked up. But then I was wondering, like, why would I do that and think that that was okay? And the reason was because when you're knitting this, it's based off of measurements. And more than that, I was not measuring. I was just trying on until I was reaching an armhole depth that I liked. And I like the armhole depth, but then I don't like the size of this sleeve. So when I was picking up at the rate that the pattern suggests, I wound up with more stitches on my armhole. And I figured okay, so I, I must have just knit this longer and it, surely it's going to be fine. Not fine. <laughs> so that's part one. Part two was I thought, let me, let me check and see another cardigan that I've knit at a similar gauge that has an oversized fit that I think looks proportionate and appropriate. And so I busted out my Corsavin cardigan. This was also knit on 4.5 millimeter needles. It also has a drop shoulder. It is also a relaxed oversized fit that I really like the fit of. The only difference, obviously, is that this has a basket weave texture, so there's built-in eyelets and things, but I figured as far as referencing this, it, it would be a good place to start. So I measured this arm width, this arm sleeve width, <laughs> and fully blocked, and now having worn this quite a few times, the width of this sleeve is eight and a half inches, whereas this finished arm width, having been blocked and never worn, is 10 inches. <laughs> so I have a full inch and a half more circumference in the sleeve right now than I want. I picked up more stitches than I needed to. Laura Penrose has taught me that that's why it's bowing out the way that it is. And the moral of this story here is that I don't need to rip out the whole garment. I just need to pick up less stitches on the sleeve. And that's going to be my solution. Now, I can see the blocked fabric. I'm getting around four and a half stitches per inch. So I love the depth of the armhole. It's about the same as the Corsavin cardigan. If I want this sleeve to be about an inch and a half, if not two inches smaller in circumference than this one, or sorry, than it is right now, and I'm getting about four and a half stitches per inch, that means I'm going to want to pick up about nine less stitches than I did, which is just about as many as she says to pick up in the pattern for my size, but to play it 
safe. I'm going to pick up for the size down, assuming that when it's being worn, it's going to grow that much more. I also thought an interesting experiment that I did was I have decreased from the shoulder down to where we are right now. And so I went ahead and I actually put the sleeve on the wrong way. Let me actually I need to do it with this one. So I put the sleeve on the wrong way and tried to kind of hold it where the, the drop hem, the drop sleeve starts. And I figure this is a perfectly reasonable amount of ease in a, in a sleeve. I, I like how this sits here. So I'm also referencing the number of stitches I have on the on this edge here after having done those sea creases. And everything's leading me to pick up the amount of sleeve stitches for the size below mine in the pattern. And that's what I'm going to do. So I, I thought that this was just really interesting. And and I'm really glad I took the time to stop. I'm upset that I haven't been able to work on this for the past couple weeks because I've been dealing with this. But I'm really glad that I've taken the time to do all the things I have to do to make this exactly what I want it to be, to, to make it the, the project I'm going to love. So next steps on this. I think I'm going to try... So with the, the funky construction here, the the body that you're seeing has been knit after the sleeve was picked up. I think anyway, I'm going to try to just rip back the sleeve and see if I can finagle something under the arm there to not have to undo the two inches of body that I've done. And if I have to undo that, that's fine too. But I'm just curious to, to play and see. And and so that's that's where I'm at with that. In other news, the I know a lot of people were actually really concerned that I was knitting this at too dense a gauge. But I mentioned I, I did the I did a, a gauge swatch and I was happy with the fabric I was getting after blocking at the more dense fabric. And I stand by that. I can see through this fabric even still. And so I'm really glad that I, I decided to go down in needle size and get and get that more dense fabric. I think it's going to pay off in the long run. So I'm really pleased with the drape. I mean, look, it's still moving. It's still really drapey. I just think that I've packed way too many stitches into way too small space on this leaf. And it's my fault. My bad. My bad. I apologize. <laughs> But you live and you learn. No big deal. I'm glad we figured this out. I was really concerned because looking at the photos, I see that the sleeves are oversized. And in some cases, I think it looks fine. In others, I think that they're too big. Um, but other than that, I thought that the whole garment, it's really exactly what I wanted. I like all of the finishes and the details. So... I've had suggestions that maybe I've picked the wrong pattern, and I was open to that. I was looking around at other duster cardigans that would maybe work better to suit my needs, but really it was the finishes on this one that I loved so much. And so I'm hoping that with making that one quick little modification of just dropping down the amount of sleeves I pick up, hopefully I'm going to get the result that I love and want, and I'm very excited about it, and I think it's beautiful still. And it's so light and airy. And this is just gorgeous. I'm very excited. I'm really proud of myself for taking the time to figure this out and do all of those things that no one wants to do. And so, yes, I just couldn't be more thrilled. And so she lives another day on the needles, technically, as a whip for, uh, for the future. So hopefully by the next time we chat, I, I'm like holding up the same thing with a slightly smaller sleeve. <laughs> I hope we're right back here next week. But for now, that's where we're at on the sand cardigan. Like I said, it's been a whip for 30 days now. Now, I did mention I have a new cast on and it's probably not what you're expecting. Perhaps you caught my spring knitting plans video that I just put out this week. I'm so proud of that video. I really put so much thought and time into it. And I'm 
so excited about the plans that I have because of that. And so this correlates to one of the plans I mentioned in that video. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, at aka Nora Knits, you may have seen when I was playing around with the swatch of this fabric. And basically, once the sand cardigan was at its standstill, I was in the mood for some mindless knitting and decided to get a jump start on some of these spring knits. So that's what this is. I'm going to lead with the fabric. <laughs> I'm dying to see how this comes across on camera. It's a very interesting fabric. It's very drapey. And I I think at this point, you're going to have absolutely no idea what it is just yet. <laughs> but what you are looking at is the beginnings of the back panel of a Farnham tee. So this is a stripeless Farnham tee by the Knit Pearl Girl. It's been on my needles for a week today. Basically, when I wrapped up filming last week, I was so devastated about the whole sand cardigan thing that I just cast it on then and there. And I'm going to tell you why I chose that pattern in a second, but I think we should first talk about the yarns that I'm using. So I'm holding two strands of yarn here, one of them being Lion Brand True Boo in the colorway Khaki. And this is 100% rayon from Bamboo. And then the other yarn that I'm holding it with is this Sparkle linen -y yarn, and it's Universe by Universal Yarns, and it was a limited edition 10th anniversary celebration colorway. I believe the color is bronze, and that's a linen, cotton, and um, the sparkle tinsel makeup. So I had both of these yarns in my stash, and I was trying to find a way to get them both out of stash, and I thought they might be interesting held together. And the, the feelings were split on the original swatch I made that some people said, absolutely not, that is so ugly and weird. <laughs> And then some people thought, yeah, that's really interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see how that works up. And the curiosity one, I personally think it's a really interesting and intriguing yarn or, or fabric. From afar, I don't think it's going to pick up on the sparkle very much. The sparkle yarn is interesting because it appears to have a couple strands of the linen threads, then a strand each of this tinsel, one's silver, one's gold, and then that whole thing is strangled by, I'm guessing, the black cotton. And the color of the linen is this almost oil spill type color where there's sort of grays and blues that blend into more mauve pinks and purples. But from afar, the whole thing really reads as neutral. And then the, the sparkle, you only catch it in certain light. So then by adding it to this greenish tan, khaki is, is a great way to describe this color, the two sort of cancel each other out in a way and and just leave this interesting, interesting fabric. People compared it to leopard print or someone said it, it made them their brain think bugs. <laughs> I do kind of see that. But I feel like I'm trying to look at it from afar because I haven't so much. I'm usually got my nose right up in it. I personally feel like the fabric is very grandmother of the bride. <laughs> Something you would see in like a formal gown for, you know, someone who's looking for just a little bit of glitz, but not too much. And I think that kind of works for my style, if I'm being honest. So, but then you get up close 
And you can really appreciate every individual stitch is so different. I haven't been particularly careful about how I've been marling the two together. I enjoy the randomness of it all. And I think for a simple tea, it's going to make a really great sort of not so basic basic. The two fabric or the two fibers the two yarns together make a really heavy and and drapey fluid fabric and and so I'm very happy about that. People asked on Instagram if it was at all itchy. I don't think it is. They were concerned that the sparkle yarn, the tinsel, would make it itchy. I will say that the knit side, the right side of the fabric, is completely smooth. Like, not even a little bit of a weird thing going on. The reverse side, if you catch one of those sparkle yarns in just the right way, it's got a little... to it. <laughs> But as a fabric, as a whole, I, I have no issue with the way that it feels. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm going to be playing a little bit of yarn chicken. <laughs> but uh, right now I'm feeling we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So now let's talk for a second about the pattern and why I chose this pattern. So I was looking for something very simple. I, I, I was toying back and forth between a tee and a tank. And ultimately just decided that for the fabric I was getting, a tee felt a little cooler. I was nervous. I guess sort of going along with my idea that the fabric is, is reminding me a little bit of like grandmother of the bride. I don't know. I felt like a tank might, I don't know, date the fabric a little bit or, or the fabric would make a tank look a little bit too mature. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I wanted something a little cooler. And I guess maybe more than that, the way I'm, I would wear a tank versus a tee, I think I could keep the whole thing looking more youthful if it wasn't a tee form. So I could just wear this with some ripped jeans and sandals. If I did it with a tank, I feel like it, the way I would want to style it would just lean a little too mature for my liking. So I, I had so many tees that I was toying with. I knew that my gauge was around 20 stitches per inch on a five millimeter needle and that that was giving me a little bit of an open gauge. So I I was just, I mean, I just was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through Ravelry trying to find a t-shirt that I liked the, the style of, the cut of. And I got to the Farnham tee by the Knit Pearl Girl. And not only was it very close to my gauge, it also just checked these boxes that I had as far as how I would like this tee to fit. Now, it's a little hard to imagine because all of the images for this pattern include the stripes, but I... I just really liked the drop shoulder. I decided I didn't want a raglan. I really liked the high cut of the neck. And I liked the, the cropped nature of it. So I just went ahead and bought the pattern and said, let's give this a shot. I will say that if you are interested in knitting this pattern, the Farnham T, with stripes, buy it now. She will literally tell you to a T how to make those stripes all line up in the seam and like look perfect. <laughs> and that's amazing. When you're knitting it in the plain fabric, you're kind of like, okay, wh when are we going to stop talking about the stripes? But that's completely on me. I, I figured though, I might as well buy this pattern because if I wanted to knit a stripe T, then I have all that information there. And I just like the cut of it. I liked the silhouette. What can I say? So I'm doing things a little differently, <laughs> but so far I've just been following the pattern as it is, obviously, thin stripes. So I'm knitting this according to pattern in the size G. <laughs> I am using a 4.5 millimeter needle. So I dropped down from my original swatch that got me 20 stitches per inch. Let's measure this. 20 stitches per four inches, sorry. And as it stands, I am getting just over five stitches per inch. So, so I'm going to be getting about 
just a little bit more than that 20 stitches per per four inches, which was my my thought because we have another fabric that's going to stretch and drape and it's going to be heavy. And so I'm trying to just go a little bit smaller. Now, <laughs> the pattern suggests that I should have about 996 yards of DK weight yarn. I am going, I currently have three balls of the Trubu and four of the linen, and I'm going to be purchasing a fourth ball of the Trubu. But even with that, I am going to have about 964 yards of yarn. She did say that she thinks that those guesstimates are a little generous, so I'm hoping they're real generous. <laughs> but we're just going to see what happens here. I just really liked the style, and I don't know. I was kind of hoping maybe with the weight of this, mine would, would be able to just block out a little bit longer, so hopefully we could push it with that crop a little bit. Or I cut the sleeves a little short. I don't know. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to play around. But to be honest, it was one of those things where sometimes I like to sit and modify a pattern and other times I just want to follow one. And the main idea for this knit was to get this yarn out of stash. And if I wind up having a cool t-shirt in the end, then great. If I don't, then we'll figure that part out later. I just wanted some mindless knitting. So, Anyway, this is the Farnham Tea, the Knit Pearl Girl. Currently, I mean, I'm holding this as if you could see anything. We've got the back panel here that, similarly to the sand cardigan, was sort of just like cast on, short rows across the back seam. And now I'm about ready to pick up the front to start knitting these sort of front panels. I'm thinking because of my yarn constraints, even though I really like how tight the neck is on her, I might just drop mine down a pinch just to kind of play it safe um, and buy a little yarn where I can. So that, that's all I'm thinking at the moment. But I don't know yet. It's been on a standstill for the past couple days because it was time to move on. <laughs> and I wasn't mentally prepared for that. But it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. So this is the first of my sort of spring knitting plans that I'm executing, and it's been on the needles, like I said, for a week. I feel like this is one of those episodes where I've just been talking, and and I, I think back and wonder if anything that I've said so far has made any sense at all. <laughs> so hopefully it did. Um, but yes, so those are my three whips. The plans I have for the next week are to finish knitting the sleeves on the folklore, get all of that blocking, and not worry about the ribbing until after the weekend. With that in mind, I'll probably put off anything else until the sleeves are done. However, once that's complete, I'm going to decide if I'm ready to mentally frog the sleeves on the sand cardigan or if I'm mentally prepared for the picking up of the fronts on the Farnham. And I hate when this happens, when every project is at like a, a pivotal moment. Sometimes I think about just casting on a tube, just a tube. <laughs> <laughs> so that I can have some miles of stock and net for when I don't want to think. But at the moment, everything's very thinky. So depending on where my brain is at over the next week, will determine which of my, I guess, more mindless knits are going to get more attention, either the sand cardigan or the Farnham tea, depending on which seems like the easier to tackle. So those are the plans. I did want to just quickly show you, I, I guess, a finished object, sort of. I didn't weave in ends. So over over the weekend, like I said, I didn't get, I didn't get much knitting done. I was, I was laying low. But I did want to, like, do something. Okay, so Easter's coming up, and I had this idea for an Easter egg. My family does an Easter egg hunt where we have those plastic eggs that you put the candy in, and you close them up, and you hide them, and whatever. And I thought it would be cute to try and sort of crochet <laughs> one of those eggs. And so I did. <laughs> this is just a prototype, and 
I admit it's a little too close to Easter to even sort of do anything about it. But it was more one of those things I just wanted to get out of my brain. I didn't have any any sort of further plans for it. Um, and I just used some stashed yarn and and didn't count anything. I, I didn't have a plan. I was just sort of going. But let me show you. So <laughs> this is my cute little egg. And yeah, I think it came out pretty, pretty sweet. I used this yarn I had in stash. It's loops and threads and it's like their soft baby or something like that. I'll, I'll put the name on, on the screen here. But I held it double and then used my favorite crochet hook which is my five millimeter. This this was the first crochet hook I ever bought and it's I'm very biased to it. I love knitting or knitting crocheting with this. With that size, with that hook in particular. So I held the yarn double. I was really trying to get as dense a fabric as I could without hurting my hands. And I got close. I think it could be a touch more dense. But basically what I did was I I crochet. Okay, so I started with a magic ring and I then started increasing every few stitches until I got to and and just knitting in a spiral, not knitting rows, just spiraling around. I just wanted to get the idea out of my head. So, I did that until I was like satisfied with the sort of width of the egg and then I just knit straight up until I was satisfied with the height of the egg. And so <laughs> this, I made just sort of like this little cup. I then did a slip stitch, uh, sort of, sort of bind off, I suppose. Then I, I just did the same thing on the other side. I cast on with a, a magic ring started with fewer stitches in my ring on the top than I did the bottom. I believe the bottom I had nine stitches in my first round in that ring. And the top, I think I did five. And started increasing at a less frequent rate than I did the bottom so that the taper would happen a little bit more gradually. So I'd get a little bit more of that sort of pointed egg shape. And then literally just increased until again I was happy with the the sort of dimension the width of it made sure it was fitting on top of the bottom appropriately and then I just did little puff stitches single crochet puff stitches um every sixth stitch or so and that's why I didn't math this out so I wound up having two right next to each other in the back but um <laughs> But then, yeah, I haven't woven in ends, but I did add a crochet, a little, a little chain so that the two can never really come apart. And I should have attached the chain from uh, one sort of inside all the way to the other inside, but I just attached it to the edge on the bottom here. And, and basically what I have now is something that I could say, put a <laughs> tape measure inside of and then close it up. And it's a little egg. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a perfect world, I would like sit down and, and crunch all these numbers and share with you how I actually did it. I'm hoping that if you know how to crochet and you're actually interested in making something like this, then the very lame description I just gave you is going to be enough to do so. But I don't know. It was fun to just play around. I haven't crocheted in a little while. And I prefer crochet when it comes to these sort of little tchotchke things. And I thought if I was feeling particularly ambitious, I could maybe crochet up a few of these for the, the kiddos at Easter. And and yeah, anyway, it was just a silly thing I thought I'd share with you because I was, I was pretty pleased. Let me take this out of here before I <laughs> forget it's in there. So yes, I haven't woven in any ends. And I have zero reference for you on a pattern for this. This was just my own little creativity having fun. So that's, I guess, a finished object. <laughs> 
Anyway, that is all I have for you this week. Like I mentioned earlier, I did put out the sort of secondary video of my spring knitting plans. If you haven't caught that yet, I... I really, I, I would love for you to just go ahead and watch that video. Like I said, I'm, I'm very proud of it. I put a lot of, a lot of work into it. So I really hope that you liked it. And otherwise, I'll be out enjoying my birthday weekend. So I hope that you will indulge me for my birthday and go get some sunshine. Tell someone that they look beautiful today knit something that you've been wanting to knit for a long time, but you've been putting off. I want you to go enjoy a piece of cake or something and just really have a good day, whatever that means for you. And maybe you could do something to make someone else's day a little bit better too. That would really bring me a lot of joy for my birthday. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video and knitting content in general, then I would really appreciate it so much if you would go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. You can subscribe, and if you ring the bell, it'll notify you anytime I post a video, just like that secondary one I had this week. And other than that, I post my weekly Saturday morning podcast every Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Is it Eastern Time or Eastern Standard Time? I have no idea. I'll have to Google it. But that's all I have for you today. Big ol' thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, you guys. Bye.